I first met uh, BF Bud and Angie uh, of the YouTube channel Fun Adventures with Bud and Angie uh, last year at the Hawking Hills Bigfoot Festival in Logan, Ohio, uh, along with our mutual friend Jen. Uh, and since then, uh, we've become uh, close friends. And uh, Bud had contacted me about... Uh, a property that he's been investigating now for about three years or so and asked if I would be interested in coming along. That's all he had to say because I tell you what, I had the truck loaded, the four-wheeler on the trailer, and I was out the door. The property that we went to is both uh, remote and difficult to get to. Uh, you basically drive up a dry uh, creek bed in order to get to it. Uh, the yellow marker that you see here, that's where we're going to be setting up base camp. Uh, it's a little over 100 acres or so, and um, it comes complete with, you know, food plots, uh, caves. Uh, fresh water sources in the form of this pond created by, you know, hill runoff as well as I suspect an artesian well hidden somewhere out there. Um, it doesn't look like, you know, 100 acres is that much, but, you know, that's measured in the flat as opposed to the vertical. And there's quite a bit of land uh, added to this, uh, especially when you start uh, including the vertical. Now I'm going to apologize here because I'm going to flip underneath the map accidentally we're going to flip right back and uh, you can see the the large hill that uh, is behind the house or in front of the house that uh, you have to go up to access some of the property uh, it's beautiful up on top of this ridge this is the only location that you're going to get uh, any cell connection um, so it also has a, a couple of uh, marked and unmarked cemeteries on the land uh, a lot of stories to it yeah really really a cool place to go now when bud asked me about uh, coming to the property i'd seen their video in regards to going back to it and i'll be quite honest i was kind of uh, concerned uh, not so much for my truck it's a four by four it's up in the air a little bit but rather for that four-wheeler trailer that's behind it and the five-inch drop hitch that it's connected to. Uh, I was very concerned that, you know, that drop hitch would connect with a rock or something, start plowing the fields as we was going back through there, plowing the road. Um, surprisingly, we got back little or no uh, effort. Now, Bud himself has been immersed in the Bigfoot um, phenomenon from an extremely early age. And when I say that, I'm talking about pre-Finding Bigfoot uh, and pre-Roger Patterson Gimlin film. Uh, in fact, some of the information that he's told me about from over the years that was passed down generationally, uh, I find to be of extreme interest. Uh, now, he's a big guy. He's the kind of guy that you definitely want at your back. Very knowledgeable very connected uh, or excuse me he's becoming very well connected within the field and uh, he knows this phenomenon quite a bit and uh, he's extremely brave uh, his wife Angie is extremely uh, knowledgeable as well uh, intelligent um, and uh, she also displays something that I found to be very unique in, a, in an individual in that she acclimates to her surroundings so quickly 
Uh, that is something that's usually trained in, 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 into an individual. That's not something you usually see um, being an intrinsic um, trait. Uh, and what that means is when you acclimate to an area, you're acclimating to the sights, the sounds, the smell, uh, the vibrations in the ground. Uh, you're knowing your surroundings without having to look, see. And uh, I thought it was truly amazing to, uh, to see that in a, an individual uh, because for one it's very rare I've like I said I've only seen it in trained individuals and um, it's actually really cool too now as you can see here uh, as we start driving back through the uh, dry creek bed uh, that's about as dry as it's gonna get uh, a little bit concerned, like I said, if the uh, the hitch grabbed a hold of a rock or whatever. Uh, but uh, again, the truck made it through fine. Um, this is uh, about the only conditions you want to go back in here in. Uh, if you have any rain or any snow, you're not going back there. So, uh, which brings up its own bit of problems, such as, you know, what to do in a medical emergency because if you have one back there you're pretty much self-reliant and you pretty much have to self uh, evacuate so you pay attention to what you're doing back here um, accidents happen and they're usually just little things that you're not thinking about uh, sprained ankles a broken leg uh, bee stings uh, medical history stuff like that you need to be aware and you need to share what you need to share with uh, the people that you're with the landowner um, purchased this property I don't know exactly when but uh, he purchased it as a place to go just to go hunting um, just to know the land uh, I got to talk with him very briefly, a very intelligent individual who uh, is very well off. And uh, he purchased, like I said, he purchased this for the family to have a place to go hunt, um, kind of do fun things together, place for picnics, a uh, place for really just to get away. And, uh, you know, this isn't, he didn't purchase this as a intended, you know, second home or third home. It's just, you know, like a vacation place. And how the landowner and uh, Bud and Angie met is a truly a great story. Now, the land itself comes with some very interesting tales. Uh, Bud has collected some very interesting pictures, he's collected some very interesting audio, and he's also collected secondhand uh, the eyewitness reports from the landowner, as well as uh, secondary or secondary hand. I can't think of the, the proper terminology right now, but uh, the stories that go with the property are very interesting and um, really, you know, when the time comes, um, I'm pretty sure they'll be told. The, uh, the best one, I think, is the one about the caretaker. I don't wanna put anything into this, but, you know, uh, outdoorsmen, outdoors people, uh, people uh, associated with the woods, there's a couple of things they don't leave behind uh, wide open, and that's like the tackle box and the fishing gear. Like I said, they're great stories, great uh, secondhand, uh, and very interesting tales to be heard. And again, here, the ruts are kind of deep, center's kind of high. Uh, 
I keep thinking that, you know, I'm cutting a row of corn behind me, but uh, it just kept on going. Now, if you're wondering how comes I don't have the audio from that day playing, uh, that I'm doing a separate audio over top of it, it's because I turned the radio on. And uh, so I don't want a, any kind of strike for any kind of music that I was playing. So uh, I am going to admit that whole uh, radio sequence, learn from the experience. Uh, remember to turn the microphone on in the truck next time and turn the radio off. And put down the windows as well so you can uh, collect the sights and sounds of the area around you, around me as I'm going. Now a lot of this property, the reason why we're taking the four-wheeler is that those hills, while they may not look all that big on uh, a 3D app or 3D map, I uh, rest assure you they are very, very tall and will wear you out pretty quick. So uh, transportation, definitely necessary. Now I wish that when we came out uh, that <laughs> this creek bed looked like this. Uh, we had originally planned to come out Sunday, oh, around noon, uh, before a storm system moved in. Unfortunately, we went to bed Saturday night and uh, woke up to a gully washer. Now, it would have been nice to have Mrs. Trackway with us. Uh, unfortunately, uh, she had a work commitment and wasn't able to come. So we're hoping that the next trip we get planned out, we can spend uh, a few days down here um, and uh, that she'll be with us. That way we can implement the, the buddy system and you know, hopefully uh, Jen will get uh, an opportunity to come out here with us as well. Wildlife in the area. Well, you've got uh, deer, raccoons, of course. Uh, there have been some sightings of black bear in the area. Um, possibly, and it's a rarity, but possibly a porcupine. Rabbits, there was lots of rabbits. Uh, squirrels. And uh, possibly something big and hairy. Virginia site. I'm with BF Bud and Angie. And uh, short time I've been here, it's been interesting. So, real quick. Uh, so, I'm gonna get the camera running and get a couple things going. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I got a lot of equipment. I haven't got it all out yet. I haven't got the battery, battery boxes out. I heard some interesting sounds. Just, uh, I don't know if the phone picked that up, but that was a wood knock close. I don't know what to think. Uh, good quality range. 
60 to 70 yards behind me. I'm going to start right here at base camp and start taking measurements. So right now we have zero RF, two millivolts. I do have a power line up there. Point three. on the EMF and that is right at my camp 0.6.9 well, I'd expect that the power's on if the power was off that might be zero all right I'm gonna go to RF Oh, there's a nice sprinkling. Yeah, stop here. I'm gonna come down here. And go towards where I heard the wood knock. Certainly a good bit of. Uh, in the area. And here they come. That's interesting. Up there, yeah, as soon as I turned the machine off, it, thump. and in I, yeah. I get that really eerie feeling up yeah, there. Got that the feeling very again, first time, time we ever came here, which is where we had when yeah. we had evidence, um, we had that feeling. Well, the, and the left, not that strong because that, that one was dread. That, that first time, that moved, yeah, that I didn't have that, dread, I just I really, did, really yeah. felt like we were. I mean, being I watched. didn't have that feeling up there, but that, I felt had to feel like hey, hey, something's watching us. And then, like, nothing was, our, neither of our phones was working at yeah. first. Yeah, that reminds me, i got to keep putting this on air, uh, airplane mode or so we had to do to, to get it to, and then take it off and then... Well, I ended up having to just restart your phone altogether to oh, get did it you? to finally okay. start working. Yeah. Okay, four wheels running off, and I get a two... It's actually going up. Oh, duh. And I do have a power line and I have a transformer over there, maybe getting closer to the transformer, so it didn't. Which should be the case. A lot of deer tracks. Two eight. And the RF we still have zero. So if I see an RF peg, be interesting. Uh, zoom in to one. I don't know, man. You got Bigfoot on the brain. It's easy, but I'm starting to pick up smells. I noticed that earlier, there was this kind of a strange aroma. Ooh, it's just laying in here. We've got a power line. So 
So we got a power line right along there. Very interesting, of course. Let me see if there's any more. Yeah, there's still power transmission lines up through there. RF still is zero. Okay. Electric 86. Yeah, that's expected. Now these, you know, electric and magnetic fields go hand in hand. Perpendicular to each other. A lot of animal tracks. Write your mud print however you expect them. Lots of deer and animal. There's something dropping. That's the second. I've heard that again. Maybe it's uh, squirrel shucking. But I don't. I don't hear squirrel shucking. I mean, they're just tossing nuts. And call this the fork. Nothing I see as being unusual. Okay, gotta turn this off or I'll run out of battery quick. Okay, up here between the house and the barn. Measuring, there you go, zero RF. I'll tell you what, if we get an RF ping down here, oh, that's something flat out. Oh, you know what? I haven't tried. I'm going to try something here in a second. Electric's still good, magnetic, nothing. Too odd. What we got here? What kind of tree is this? Huh, silver maple. Good boy. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'll be right behind the barn. Uh, okay, yeah.
Okay, I'm on this. I'm guessing this is the trail going to the pond. I'm behind. Zero RF as expected. Like I said, if that goes off, then uh, the whole wood knock in the RF thing will make me a believer. A25. I'm walking up on the H1N. It should hear me approach. Okay. Say, I mean, we, we would. You gonna keep one in here, or where are you gonna set them up at? Well, it's one, one a break is where we put that one. Okay. Plug up around the pond, and one at the barn. That's the one at the barn is up here. That's up there, right? Up here too. Like I said, there's a trail comes down this way, trail down this way, trail right over there. I just put one camera facing that way, and one facing that way. Try to force them to come this way. Like tomorrow night, I'll put a video camera on the porch facing like this way. Okay. You know, if they do show this, I want them to come where I got the video camera. Okay. I might get a camera running just temporarily until you get yours set up. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, or you pack the camera up between the back way. Okay, if you can put one out, I'll put one here and then one up at the fork. There's another fork up top of the hill there. Okay. It's called Gary's Lane. Where, where did Jen say to look at? Um, well, go and get stuff done. We can talk about that one. Okay, it's me, the Tacticam 6.0. It's been attached. And still watching the rear. We may move this a little bit further down after that. I did uh, map a couple uh, camera traps uh, as well as audio traps. So, uh, as well as um, whatever interesting feature uh, was belong. What you see here, you know, the sight glasses. Uh, well, let me rephrase, let me go back in mo one second. The stuff that's in red is my stuff. And um, what you're seeing there in the sight glass is that I got a camera pointed through that open field. The thing that looks like a bear trap is actually an audio trap uh, that's listening to the area. As well as what looks like deer tracks there. Well, that's representing of uh, tracks. And uh, it just might ne not necessarily be deer tracks. Carrying that stuff. Oh, you want to drive up there? Well, I don't want to walk up. Oh, that's, that's good. We'll take okay. Yeah, we want to drive. I mean, it's a good way. Huh? I said walking is going to take you quite a while. Yeah, we wouldn't be back till 11. What time you got, honey? I got 8.55. Almost 9? Yeah, it's going to be dark soon then. Yeah, maybe. You can, huh? Yeah, I got a, I got a real good high beam melting flash. 
like I said, it's in the gearbox. I ain't got nothing to do. I'll get some. I'll get the night vision and uh, I'll get the night vision and uh, we'll, we'll get back. Uh, this area here is the pond and uh, for Friday night uh, I didn't put out the audio trap but I did put up you know or we did put up a uh, camera trap pointed in that direction uh, come Saturday night well the audio trap will be out Right here at this tree. 
just a month ago. And like I said, I got bipedal functions right here. I mean, you can tell the, it was it was two-legged because you could <laughs> later on I got deer coming down. I heard deer coming, but it sounded like it was up here to the mouth, up here at the fork. And I was like, well, I told him, Angus, I'd love to go up here and around. Because this is where Gary said he heard the, the, that talk, that Sierra sound, yeah. when I played it for him. But, yes. I mean, that recorder, I got 10 hours of bullfrogs, you know. But it, you could tell, because they stopped and ch, ch, ch. I mean, you, you've hunted, you can tell yeah. deer or squirrel. You, you can tell between a person and an animal. up against the back see if that just to try to keep doing that you want to take pictures or what no it's video tape recording right now in 4k oh is it really yeah sweet um yeah, yeah. if it starts raining now we'll have to come back and get it yeah definitely um yeah because i mean the best thing i can think of is like get a milk jug cut it and cut it and Instead of milk jug on it with the lid, you know, and have one side open. You know what I mean? We have the uh, we have that here. You have got a I've got the water jug down there. Uh, I've got two uh, big. I, I drink tea. Yeah. Two big iced tea okay. containers. Okay. Well, right. Yeah, we'll fix one of them up tomorrow. Then you say you got one or two of them. I've got two. Of them, so. Okay. Well, maybe we'll put one on that saddle because that's where I've got my recorder now. 